So the Bible says that unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, do you see? It remains alone. So there are going to be dark seasons where you have to go through. Amen. Amen. Elijah went through darkness. He was depressed. Do you see? In the book I was reading, he appeared in a vision and he he told Rejoiner and some people who were having a meeting, he told them that I failed that that test. That's why the rest of my ministry was given to somebody else. And he, he said that in the test, he said that I ran away from the fight with Jezebel. I shouldn't have run away. He said I should have fought with her. Like I fought with the 400 prophets of Baal. I should have fought that one too. And I would have defeated her. But because I didn't, it affected other generations and so many things, bad things happened after. So I should have fought that one. And he said today, many people are failing the fight with Jezebel. They are running away. David went through darkness after murdering his associate. I mean, that was a serious mistake. So maybe you have entered a season of darkness having made a mistake. Not to kill your assistant. It's serious. (laughs) How many will agree with me that he entered a dark phase of his life? Yes. And you may have entered a dark phase because of a mistake that you've made. A disappointment, a disillusionment, a horror that you have been into have made you enter a dark phase. But you see, after the dark phase, and if you go through the dark phase, the dark phase may be initiated by you. It's still dark. Amen. Amen. Joseph entered a a dark phase. His brothers didn't want him. When you are rejected, it's one of the bad experiences spiritually because it it makes you take decisions that you can take a wrong decision. Yeah. You know? I remember one brother, when he was coming into the room, he would open the door slightly and he he, he would say, "Can can I come? It's like he was always trying to say that I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a meeting here that I'm not supposed to be in. You know, and we, we kept on noticing, why do you always do that? Can I, can I come? Can I come? In the end, he left. In the end, he left. Because, you see, there was a spirit that he felt he was not part. And as you keep on feeling that, before you realize it, it becomes real. And everybody becomes nervous. Can I? Is, is it Okay. Can I come here? (laughs) Oh, yes. Esther entered a dark season when she became an orphan. Oh, yes. Her father was dead. Her mother was dead. And it was like her life was bought. And I'm sure that she would cry in the night when she would see people with mothers and see people with fathers, and see people with families. And she would say to herself, I don't have a family. But you see, God was taking her through that season. If she developed a bad bad attitude, she would never become the queen. Because when she comes, she'll come with an attitude and the airs. And that one also produces a smell. And remember, they took one year to remove her smell. (laughs) <laughs> they bathed her for one year. Mantala hmm? Katobara Bandala. I don't know what dark season has been activated, but I want to tell you that if you are a child of God, hmm, the dark season that has been initiated is having a certain effect and can have a certain effect. If you let patience have her perfect work. Moses entered a dark season. 
when he murdered someone. I mean, his life was normal. He was in the palace and everything was going well. And suddenly, he killed somebody. You know, I mean, like, I, I think when we went out in the evening to have a drink, before he realized by the, ev- the end of the evening, he was a murderer. And, and now he, they were looking for him. And it was a problem. And suddenly he had to run out of Egypt. Far into the wilderness. Because of a mistake that he made. Many of your mistakes initiate dark seasons. Seasons of the night. Which are now going to lead to certain great things in your life. You see, your mistake is actually... Part of, you see, God knows the mistakes you are going to make. How many think God knows the future? So as you're waking up today and all your life, God knows the mistakes you are going to make. And he has a plan even for your mistake. But your mistake, the, thing, the good thing about your mistake is that it initiates a season, a very important season of your life. Matalo makabarada. When Jesus was arrested, he said to them, when I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Darkness has come. He said, I know darkness has come. I know this is a dark season. As if there's no God. As if I don't pray. As if there's no help. As if God doesn't answer prayer. You see, and that's why I say that, ask how you go through how you go through the questions you answer by the time you finish answering all the questions, how you go through is going to now determine yes, you are in or you are out. So make sure you go through well because except the seed fall into the ground, into the dark, eh? to the pressure, to the darkness, it abides alone. Psalm 105, verse 18. Ah, this is the King James. All right. It says, whose feet? Let's read, let's say from verse 17. I'm talking about your life. Once you are a child of God, listen, if you are a child of God, you will go through seasons. And I, I, I would say that many of the seasons are dark. Even when there's brightness, a dark one is starting. <laughs> but you see, the Bible says he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold for a servant. A dark season began. A dark season began. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. And he was laid in iron. But I want you to look at a Young's literal translation. Young's literal translation. Kanda Masbalona Tabere Dalmazandala. Young's literal translation. It's a pity you don't have Young's literal translation. But I'm going to read it to you. It says, They have afflicted with fetters his feet. Iron has entered his soul. Iron has entered his soul. You see, God hardens you. When when they made him a prisoner, Mm -hmm. eh? in verse 17. Are you there with me in verse 17? All right. Uh, He sent a man who was sold as a slave. When they made him a slave, somebody who had a house and a home, when they were taking him, he was crying. If you read the detail of the detailed story in the history books, we show how what happened. He told them his father is, is a very rich man. And think about you, if you were arrested like that and they were making you a slave, will you not talk? I mean, he told them the amount that their father, his father would give them to just release him. I didn't. Because God had determined that he was entering a certain dark season of his life. And what happened when he entered the dark season? The Bible says, Ion entered his soul. 
Yeah, he was a softy. He was a pampered last born. Every time, nice things, nice things, nice things. Yeah. Ion entered his soul. Ion. Malata baruma shambada. Ion is entering your soul and it's making you hard and I mean strong for your calling and your ministry. Years ago, when I started in the ministry, I started to see this loyalty around me. And I always see it. People murmuring, complaining. If you are a foreigner working in Ghana, people will speak chi around you, or Ghana, or whatever language. You'll be surprised what they are saying. You'll be surprised what they are saying. I've always been like a foreigner in Ghana. Because I grew up speaking English. My mother, Swiss, and my father, Ghanaian, with no apologies at all. No apologies. Thankful to God for what he made me, how he made me. But I started to detect it. And I started to say, uh, what's the first stage of this loyalty? Independence. I, I, I don't know how I knew it. <laughs> they are with you, but they, they are sort of separate. And what's the second stage? Offense. How did I know it? How did I know this in 1995? Because I, I was preaching this seven stages of disloyalty then, in 1995. It was years after I wrote the book in 1998. The reason I know that in 1995 was I know somebody who left in 1995 who preached the seven stages that I had taught. He left the church then, but he taught it before he left. Yes. So, then you start to experience uh, what? Passivity. How did I know? And then, criticism. And then politics. When they meet, what did they say? What did they think? And deception. And open rebellion. And execution. How did I know all this? The church has just begun. But you see, entering that phase, it put iron in my soul. Yeah. And gave me a worldwide ministry. There are so many people that are just happy to have me to come and preach about loyalty and disloyalty. Or to read my book. Or to even hear from somebody who can explain the book to them. It's amazing. Ion entered his soul. So today, don't be discouraged. All right, you may have entered a dark season, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's rather to make you fruitful. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. Psalm 4 and verse 1. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Amen. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me. Amen. Amen. And hear my prayer. Enlargement comes when you are in distress. It says, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Not before. It is in distress. And in the distressing situations of your life, that enlargement actually comes. Yeah, your expansion of your life, of your ministry, is actually coming in distress. He says, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Every crisis, every problem leads to your enlargement if only you can pass that test. You may not understand. You say, about this darkness, I've murdered somebody like Moses. 
How is it going to lead? It's going to lead. This is what is leading you to be the king. This is what is leading you to be the king of Israel. Yeah. That was enlarged me in my distress. It was in my distress that you, you now got the chance to enlarge me. You may have gone through a divorce, gone through a challenge, gone laid off at your job, have a beast in your house, had a situation wherever. But the enlargement is coming in the distress. I can hardly, you see, when we were persecuted at our first church in Kolegono, I, could, I, I didn't know this was what, and God was enlarging. In fact, on the first day, they broke down our walls that were broken down by the government. The government, you see, you don't fight with governments. It's something you learn with time that you don't fight against governments. Yes. It's not easy to fight a government, no matter with what the government is. So now for the government to come and attack us and break down our walls, ah, what a distress. But you see, God had something. He had the Kodesh and other things in mind. Thou hast enlarged me in my distress. So receive enlargement. You see, that's why I said that if the seed falls into the ground, if it can fall into the ground and die, it's going to bear much fruit. Psalm 23. Beautiful. Oh, yes. Mm. Now, this is a verse, uh, uh, something that we, we all know. So why bother to share it? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not wait. Verse 2. <laughs> he makes me to lie down. In green pastures. Are you listening? I, I hope somebody is sharing. I don't know whether I'm talking to the right people. Those on Facebook, I hope you are, you, are, you are actually listening. Because it's so important. That's why I said you should share this. Notice, this is your famous sound. Are you there? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He leads me by the still waters. Verse 3. O Mandele Baka. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. How does this help us? Verse 4. La menguru moli dazele. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The valley of what? The shadow of death. I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Amen. What is coming after the valley of the shadow of death? What is coming after the valley of the shadow of death? Verse 5. A table. A table prepared of the Lord. A table. After the valley. You want the table? I'm asking whether you want a table. How many want an overflow? He said, thou anointest my head and my cup runneth over. You want it? You want abundance? You want overflowing? Then you must know that there is a valley. Before this wonderful table. I'm sure many of you have not noticed this valley comes just before the table. Yes. I see a very great enlargement for you, your life, and your whole ministry. Oh, yes. God sent me to tell you that there's a very great enlargement and and a table prepared, prepared for you. Shocking. Shocking. I mean, after the valley of the shadow of death comes a table and comes an overflowing cup that... The mess you have in your house is from the abundance that you have. Things, too many things. Too much. You see somebody's furniture in the house. It's so many things because he has too much furniture. So many things in the house. The house begins to look like a curio shop. Because your, your problem is from abundance. Whatever dark place you are in and whatever season 
you seem to be going through. I'm telling you fruitfulness. Amen. Fruitfulness Amen. is connected to you coming through dark places Amen. and coming through well. Thank you. Oh, yes. You know, before I close, I, I need to tell you about something scientific. I know the art students will not understand this. Mandetal majamandobedi. Receive this prophecy. When the caterpillar is moving on the trees, a time comes when he converts into a cocoon and covers himself in a case. And I'm sure the caterpillar will be saying to himself, what's this dark season? What's this dark place? Why am I here? I'm not restricted. But as he goes through the darkness and the heat of the cocoon, it's just a matter of days. He's about to emerge. This time when he emerges, he's coming out with wings. He's going to go flying. He's going to go places he's never imagined. I see you going places you never imagined. Now, this caterpillar never imagined going to visit other trees. Oh. I know our students do not understand it, but you need to go check it out. I don't know if there are students on YouTube. Larama Zobelida Bazambolade. Why am I in this darkness? Why am I in this hole? Why am I restricted? I can't move anymore. I can't move anymore. I can't move anymore. I can't move. Because another season is coming where you'll be going places you never imagined you would ever be. This is what the Lord says to you. This is what the, the prophecy you believe is the prophecy that is going to come to pass. The blessings of the dark seasons of your life are there and they are coming. And they are going to cause you to become something so different from what you've ever been before. I see you flying. I see you visiting beautiful flower to beautiful flower. Beautiful flower to beautiful flower. Beautiful flower to beautiful flower. Parola ziba Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing blessing. I remember one time there was a man called Adam. I don't know if there are still people watching me. I don't know if somebody is ready for what, what is about to happen. There was a man called Adam. <laughs> Tamando Asbalero. He was the king of the earth. Oh yes. He was the king of the earth. He was the king of the kings of all the earth. Was, there was no one wow. like him. Yes. He was having a good time. Okay. He sees lions, they bow to him. Yes. He sees lepers, they say, oh. <laughs> they, he sees snakes, they just run away. Wow. I mean, he was wild. But God said to Adam, I'm going to take you through something. Oh, I'm going to put you to sleep. So, oh no, I don't want to sleep. I'm going to close your eyes. You will not see light. You will not see light. Adam said, no, why? I'm I'm happy. I'm okay. But God said, I'm going to show you something you haven't seen before. God put him to sleep. And woke him up. To introduce him to something called woman. When he got up, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. God was going to introduce him to sex. Hey! God was going to introduce him to love. I mean, from the darkness of the sleep, he was coming out to experience fantastic day. I prophesy something amazing. Oh, yes. It's coming after the sleep. After the dark season. God is going to honor you. Uh, unimagin- Can you imagine a man solo he doesn't even, first of all, he doesn't know what is sex. No, this is serious. And God said, no, there are, there are higher things. There are higher things. Like the caterpillar, there are higher, there, there's flying. You've never flown before. You'll be flying soon. Every holy hand. 
Mambo Sandala Mashamba Kabaranda. Father, thank you. Thank you for your power. This morning, we are so excited. We are so grateful. I pray, I want you to touch your television, hold your phone, hold, put your hand on your heart. I need to pray with you because fruitfulness, fruitfulness is happening in your life. And God is taking you through either a self-induced season or a mistake-induced season. It doesn't matter how the season has been induced, maybe induced by something else, but through that season, Manoma Rusan Jomzen Dimbes Bilo Ambara Masato Balaka Tabala. Father, thank you for everyone watching today. Thank you for those part of this amazing service receiving power to come through excellently. Thank you for flights. Thank you for flying and new amazing experiences, unimaginable, that are coming to your children as we pass through this season and we go through whatever season induced by our lives. Thank you. Thank you for the darkness that David experienced when he was running away from Saul for years. But Lord, through it you made him the king. Thank you. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. May the Lord strengthen everyone come through beautifully gracefully to accomplish all that is his will to be the person God has called you to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Father I thank you thank you disintegration I hear as you break up before the Lord great fruitfulness will come out of you in Jesus